this absolutely glorious. I knew the sunflowers were going to be good when they came out. I could stop and paint here, but I want to go up and see the other field yet, and it might be easy for access as well. This one's a bit difficult in parking here, and I can sit in this corner. I may well come back. I think that'll be better. I think we should use that lovely bit of red house in the distance there as well to set off the you know, yellows and the greens. So I know I'm going to be doing a few paintings up this way. Okay, we've got my unison pastels, set of brushes, some water, that's all I'm going to need, and a hot pressed watercolour paper, £140, and of course the scene behind me. Well this is a scene I think I'm going to be painting a couple of times this season. Um, it's a beautiful view across here, and so is the other one further down as you've just seen. This one we're going to do with water and pastel. So it's very light pastel, and it's just as vibrant, so let's not have any rubbish about the fact that if we use water it dulls it down. Yes, if we smudge pastel, yes, if we blend pastel, yes, if we use water, the first coats are going to be duller. But they will also be fixed with water, so it means I can put fresh coats over the top. So I'm not going to paint and then leave it like that with water and pastel. I'm going to paint and then work my coats over the top. Because they'll be fixed, they'll take fresh colour on top and they'll be just as vibrant and it's much more fluid and rapid. Recently you saw me do a, a picture on Ongres paper just down the road from here, down the French Chemin, the little lane. But here we're going to have a go at these sunflowers, take a fair bit in, I'm going to be doing different compositions with this uh, technique in the next few days. Um, but it's lovely and fluid, it's lovely and light, it's lovely and bright. It's a beautiful place to be, of course. Isn't this wonderful? And you'd like to be here painting with me. Well, you have the invitation. Right, let's have a look at this then. Let's have a go. I'm going to work out the composition first of all with a little bit of light pastel just to get to, to know where I want my objects to be. And then we'll go straight in with the water and the pastel. So first of all, I just want to take a, a light coloured pastel and just work out where things are going to go here. I'll take a very light uh, blue-grey. Got my insects on here already. Yes, that will just show nicely. So I use my fingers to square up out here and uh, decide what I want to take in. And uh, today I want um, quite a bit of foreground. So let's see, my halfway point in this here is about there. It's my centre point. So I'm not going to put them all in now. I'm going to put them in later just so I know where I am. First of all. horizon coming through there and off level from a distance even further so we've got foreground middle distance and distance and then even more distance here and that should about do it in the sky I've got a lovely piece of cloud coming up here at the moment I want to use because it's leading the eye in so let's get straight into that with the water now I prefer to put the pastel on first and then the water afterwards and the brushes I'm going to start with well, I'm going to start with a, um, a mop a nice big oval mop one of my favorites for this job and uh, let's start with a nice deep blue azure sky here. So straight across my paper I've worked out some mounts from earlier so I know my mounts want to come up to the edge of the masking tape here. It goes right through there. to bring it right down to those trees straight away then in with the water and let's paint this and look how we can just make it like um, a poster paint 
can't really say watercolour because it's not as transparent, it's slightly transparent. And poster paint, of course. I had this argument with somebody in Smith's years ago, a young girl who didn't know her stuff at all. I went in for some uh, watercolour and she tried to give me poster paint and I said, no, watercolour is a different medium. Oh, well, it's used with water. Well, yes, it might be mixed and soluble with water, but it's not what is called watercolour. So here we have a water-soluble thing called pastel. And people are so surprised when they see me do this and the fact that they don't realise you can use pastel in this way. Now that, that coat is fixed. That's the beauty of it. So straight away I've got a fixed coat. Uh, and it's so immediate, it's so fast. Here I want to have a lovely deep purple. So I'm going to take my much warmer purple blue here. Go much darker into that in just a moment. Put that across here. So I'm really going to work very rapidly. I want to capture the moment and this is the beauty of this technique. It's so fluid and it's so rapid. Very deep, almost ultramarine blue now. Those of you that saw me do this with the uh, poppy field over near uh, in the Dales there, near Boston Spa, will know how well this can work. Now even deeper still with my purples. Very, very darks. And I'm going to start getting texture with this now. Remember, I can with pastel I can put light over dark, which is such a beautiful thing to be able to do. So here, I'm now able to take my brush and make these textures before it's completely dry, leaving the light, lighter blues in between. I can paint with the pastel, with the block itself, or with the brush. And again, it's a beautiful way to work. These effects we can get already. I want to come back into this in a moment with them. Um, the lighter blues. I'm going to bring this dark mauve all the way along the back of these trees here, right the way down through there, because I'm going to want this as a background colour for my distant trees. So I'm blocking them all in. This is why I wanted to know just where I was going to paint earlier. Look how fast this is. Be bold. Believe in your abilities. Believe you can do it. To paint those trees in there right through to the background here even down into here and of course if you've got a big pastel like this and you can't use it very easily um, to make finer marks of course you can do that with a brush now look we can bring these little trees and things in here with the brush and make our finer marks by drawing with the brush it's so versatile I had somebody once say, well, it's not like pastel, it's nothing like pastel, it doesn't look like a pastel, but of course it does, it's exactly the same stuff. All I've done is just blended it and made it more fluid with water. Right, back into the background there, with my blues again. Just going to come across there, and I'm going to come all the way over the back here, a very distance here. A little bit darker back there, and I'm going to take a deeper blue now. I can find my deeper blues, here we are. Start blending into there a little bit. Right, let's use the brush on that in the distance now, carefully, clean water. And I'm just going to put my distant hills in here. Look how quick that is to do. I can come over this with the lighter colours in a minute, I've no worry. The brighter the day, the sunnier the day, the bigger the difference between your lights and darks. And that's what gives you the brightness of the day. Right, we'll bring those darks down into here. Now I want to start getting the darks of these trees against the light here. And let's come up to this tree now and get the effects of it. And it's like an ordinary pastel now. And I can come down into these trees to make the effects into the trees. Lovely way to work. I can go as thick as I like with the pastel. I think it's nicer than pastel paper. This really is my favourite way of working with pastels. I much prefer this way. I can come down gently into the distance there. And I'm going to bring them one into the other like that. But it's a lot warmer than this, so I need more colours over the top. I need more pink just glazing over the top here. Bring some of that pink gently across here because it is slightly warmer up there. You look for these colours one against the other to make the colours work. Distance here. Oh, 
I'm almost happy with that sky now as it is. Just about do me. Background, background trees. Right through there, just catching the light. Right through here, up into here, where it becomes that tape down because the sun's making my masking tape come off, which is not really helping matters. And we'll just blend it through and start to make some textures in the moment to get the feeling of these wonderful areas of background for the sunflowers to go over in just a moment. And I can bring the stems of that down and through now, the tip of the brush, to leave the, as if it's the ground shining through between them. So you see how useful this technique can be because you can get the textures as well. I can kill it back with my finger or I can just ping them out gently. I want to bring in the light here. This is a bit so fun. Grasses and things that are very dark down here. We'll, get, we'll just pick those up with the light just coming through this edge. Really start to play with these distant colours as well. Beautiful colours. And I want to pick up on these turquoise colours. going on with these sunflowers here. And the leaves catching the sunlight but they're much cooler as they come down through here. And we've got a couple of delightful little yellow flowers just happening down here which are quite important to me. I want to get those in. The light's just shining through back here over these flowers. Gently scumbling that colour in. I don't need the brush as much now. I can still use the brush if I need for textures and darks, which I'm going to do in maybe just a moment. I just need a few more of these. I'll start getting these dark blobs of these sunflowers in here to the background. Um, I'm almost there to start on uh, the flowers themselves. Let's put a few light greens in, these little twists of across the paper, get the effect of the distant sunflowers here. Now, of course you could use any brushes for texturing. In the uh, poppies one you saw me use the, the rake brush to give texturing. It's got some of these lovely light blues coming through here as well. I'm going to have to get better compositions as I go along. But it's going to be great fun coming back here and doing a whole series of these, I can see. We're well into it now. You see the big differences as I have these warmer and darker colours amongst the lights. I've almost soaked the top of my paper now. I can't get much more pastel to take again. Back with our sunshine colours, shall we? A bit of the pinks here and there breaking up through here. Last darks against lights to try and pick out this sunlight back there. Right, final darks. A very dark. 
dark pastel against these. I think we'll call that just about done for today. It's pretty warm out here now and I don't know, I'd like to do another one. I don't have any more people with me at the moment so I'm going to have to come back. Just down here, some little bits of light that might just aid us a bit. hard enough then. That's better. Just move these darks against lights. There we go. Stop at that. We'll work on another one later. And there's our view. Well there's our view then and I hope you've enjoyed that. It's been another experience for me but a struggle and again I'm learning by it and I'm now going to have to uh, produce more and uh, use this view again to uh, use acrylics as well as possibly even some oils but we'll play around with the water and pastel a bit more yet. 